From virtual to real, Nissan presents GT Academy Race to Dubai. Over the next few months, a selection of Nissan's youngest racing drivers will be training for one of the world's toughest Enduros. The Dubai 24 Hours will follow their highs and their lows as they attempt to make the grade in the world of professional motorsport. But unlike your average racing driver, there's one thing that makes these guys unique. They've all learned their craft on a PlayStation. This is Road to Dubai. Since 2008, GT Academy has been turning PlayStation gamers into racing drivers, and the program's already produced three professional racing drivers. 2008 winner Lucas Odoniev, the 2010 winner Jordan Tresson, and the 2011 winner Jan Mardenbra. And in 2012, three more names were added to the list of winners. European no, GT Academy winner Wolfgang Reib. I just want to keep Russian. pushing and achieve bigger goals and bigger dreams. Russian GT Academy winner Mark Shulzitsky. For me, it's one chance, only this chance, and I want to take it. And German GT Academy winner Peter yeah, Pizzera. My experience in GT Academy was very fantastic. For me, it's like uh, they put me out of my normal life and throw me into a dream. Since Wolfgang, Mark, and Peter won the GT Academy, it's been nothing but hard work for them as they strive to reach their ultimate goal racing at the Dubai 24 hours. They'll need an international C license to compete in Dubai, and in order to get that, they need 12 signatures, which they get by racing. They've already obtained nine signatures each, so there are only three more to get. But this weekend, the boys are not racing for signatures. Instead, it's all about a challenge that'll help them prepare for Dubai. And that challenge is a 24-hour karting race. Uh, this weekend, we are at the Daytona karting track for the 24 hours. Even if it's only Karting, it will help a lot because I don't think one of us know really what it is to be involved in a race for 24 hours. Guiding them through this 24-hour race is driving mentor race, Christian Van. You're going to experience fatigue uh, on a big scale. It's just great practice to really psychologically put them through the mill before they end up uh, going to Dubai. The fitter you are, the, the better you cope with it. So I think one of the, the big lessons we'll take away is how important the fitness side of the programme is. Peter's injured his back. He won't be able to race this weekend, so instead he'll be experiencing the challenge from a different perspective. He'll have to stay awake for the whole 24 hours. Today I'm the team leader. I write all the times and manage the pit stops. It's a good uh, training and uh, we must concentrate. 24-hour endurance race is massively demanding. The boys couldn't do it alone. So joining them in the cart is their driver mentor, Christian Van, and GP2 champion, Luis Razzia. Luis Razzia starts the race for the team, and he hands over to Mark in a strong 14th position. But Mark makes a few mistakes. He did see the yellow flag, and then he overtakes. The next yellow flag he see, he makes his hand up but it was too late, so it became a penalty, and we get from 14 position back to 23. As the race continues, the team keep making mistakes by pushing too hard. Things won't be any easier for them as night falls and tiredness sets in. It definitely had its ups and downs. Every single one of them so far has picked up a black flag uh, and has had to come in and serve a stop and go penalty, which is obviously not good for our position. It's a really, really good message, though, for, for the guys, because this sort of thing loses races. Whilst Wolfgang, Mark and Peter are getting their first experience of endurance racing, 2010 GT Academy winner Jordan Tresson is nearly at the end of his first season competing in the LMP2 class in the World Endurance I was Championship. I really impressed that Nissan asked me to drive in LMP this year. 
You know, after only two years uh, since I won GT Academy. The championship's taken Jordan all over the world to race at some of the best tracks, but it's been a difficult season. Well, this season uh, for Cinetech has been a really good one. Uh, we had uh, a lot of bad luck uh, first, but also we made some mistakes of drivers. For the sixth stop, the championship visited the Kingdom of Bahrain. Jordan and Signatech are hoping to show that they have the pace needed to win and bring the stream of bad luck that has followed them all season to an end. For the first time, Senior Tech Team Principal Philippe Sunor has nominated Jordan to qualify the number 23 car, and he got the team off to a good start by qualifying in ninth. I had a good start also, didn't took any risk, and uh, managed to overtake one driver after eight laps, something like that, and follow the pace of uh, my teammate. Cinetech make the most of the daylight and get up to fifth place, but racing at night poses new challenges for the drivers. Frank Mayer recovers quickly from his spin, but Olivier Lombard, who drives the next stint, has the same problem in the car. Jordan's teammate, Frenchman Olivier Lombard, managed to recover from the contact made with car 49 and kept the senior tech strong position up to the in the race before handing over to Frank Mayer for the last stint. Jordan and the team's wish for a change of fortune came at last as Frank pushed hard and crossed the line in second place in the LMP2 class. At last, a podium for the French team and the first LMP2 category podium finish for the 2010 GT Academy winner, Jordan Tressel. this podium in Bahrain, quite tough because it was really warm, even by night. I was really smiling and happy after going out of the car. Uh, it was so nice to drive, I would love to do it every day. Jordan's next race in the World Endurance Championship is the Six Hours of Fuji, but 2008 GT Academy winner Lucas Odenyeth has swapped his Le Mans prototype car for a new driving challenge, which shows he's come a long way since winning GT Academy in 2008. It's been uh, fantastic for me, very busy in terms of uh, racing and, and competing around the world. Now I feel like the grandfather of GT Academy, you know. Uh, I, I have those memories when I was the only one GT Academy winner competing in Europe. Uh, nobody knew about GT Academy and now everybody talks about GT Academy. So it's fantastic to see how is growing the, the program and, and hopefully uh, we can step up and, and have more, more future. Despite being the most experienced GT Academy graduate, he's still learning, and the next step in his career is to test and help develop an innovative new sports car, the Delta Wing. Exciting project, totally different than the, the others in Le Mans 24 hours. The main difference with the other Le Mans cars is there's no wings like in LMP2 or LMP1 cars. All the downforce is made from below, from the floor of the car. It's a big challenge for me because uh, it's not only driving and uh, set up the car and that's it. No, we need to develop the car. I need to give uh, as more information as I can to the engineers to develop the car. Alongside Lucas today is the designer of the Delta Wing, Ben Bowlby, and professional driver and co-development driver, Lucas Marino awesome. Franchitti. It's amazing to think that he's got so little experience in racing. Here he's helping us develop the car, so he's learning a whole new skill set. It's wonderful to have Lucas there, a graduate of GT Academy. His feedback's been great, and uh, he's run some really fast lap times, so um, we're very excited about uh, seeing Lucas race in the car. Very keen to learn, works at what he does very hard. It's just experience that's going to take him moving to that next level. So it's uh, hard work, but uh, really enjoying and learning step by step. It's, it's, another, it's like another league now. For me, it's Road Atlanta, Petit Le Mans race in America. And I'm sure that the Delta Wing will suit perfectly to that track. As Lucas prepares for his next race in Atlanta, the 2012 GT Academy winners are undergoing the next task in their driver development program, a 24-hour car race. They're joined by driving mentor Christian Van 
and GP2 champion Luis Razzia. They're beginning to understand how physically and mentally demanding endurance racing is. When you start to get tired, that only gets worse, and it started now. It's more difficult outside the cart than in the cart. When you are in, you have adrenaline and you are focused. When you are outside, it's a little bit more difficult to stay uh, aware. Peter can't take part in the race due to injury, but he's the team manager and it's a harder job than so he'd the expected. Guys was, uh, driving. When they are finished, they can go sleep because they have a lot of hours uh, break, but I must be awake and look all the time. It's very difficult. Wolfgang Mark and the team have taken on board all of the mistakes they've made and despite their fatigue they work hard to improve on their lap times and discipline. As a result they have a successful night and by daybreak are in a much better position. Absolutely. The boys are really, really sh showing some really good character. Drivers are tired. Uh, Wolfgang is already dead. His ribs hurt so much and uh, Mark did a very good job. I think but when he comes out of the cut he's dead too. It's uh, very hard, my hand very pain. You can't hide in a 24 hour race because you're going to feel bad for a lot of it. And I've got to say, they have come through so far with, with fine colours. So the GT Academy graduates have fought through their mental and physical exhaustion and successfully completed their first 24 hour race in a respectable yeah, eighth some spot. Problems, some penalty, but it's part of racing, and the most important thing is that we learn. A big lesson learned, I think. Um, penalties cost you the race. Had we not have had the penalties, I think we were looking at a race win. Really great team. When we are so in a 24 hour of Dubai, without the penalties, that we, we can improve, no problem. Yeah. It was perfect team, really. I, I don't know how we can make it better. I, I think podium, no problem. Really. Yeah, sure. sounds crazy, but can be, yeah. <laughs> it's possible. We were here to train, we were here to experience 24 hours, how it felt, how to work together as a team, and, and actually I would consider this a real success. Uh, I'm really, really confident that the next time we do anything like this, it, it will be will be very, very difficult to beat. Next 24 hour race of us will be in Dubai. Yeah. So we see yeah, forward to Overall, a successful first 24-hour race for the 2012 GT Academy winners, which will please boss and team principal Bob Neville as he's keeping a close eye on their performance as he makes the final decisions and preparations for the Dubai 24 hours. Coming up next on Race to Dubai. 2010 GT Academy winner Jordan Tresson races with Team Cinetech at the seventh stop of the World Endurance Championship at the six hours of Fuji in Japan. From virtual to real, Nissan presents GT Academy Race to Dubai.